topic of my second lecture is some basic features of the nervous system. Now, this is a lateral view of the cerebrum. Below the cerebrum is mesencephalon or midbrain. Below the midbrain is pons. Till below the pons is Medulla oblongata and spinal cord. Behind the palms and upper part of the metabolic is cerebellum. So, lateral view of the forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. Now, brain and spinal cord, they are covered by tough connection membranes. Three membranes collectively known as meninges. Now, these meninges, which cover the brain and spinal cord, from within outwards are pyometric. Outside the pyometric is arachnoid metal. And still outside the arachnoid metal is dura metal. From within outwards. So the innermost layer is pyometric. It is a vascular connective tissue membrane which is closely applied to the outer surfaces of the brain and spinal cord. Closely applied to outer surfaces of brain and spinal cord. As it is closely applied to the surfaces of brain and spinal cord, it is not easy to separate it easily. Biometry. The innermost ring. Outside the pyometal, there is another membranous covering known as the arachnoid metal.
cowardly brain and style of God. This is a recognition. Still outside the recognizement of the duality. So three membranes collectively known as the meninges, which form within of what are biometer and cloud metal in the world. The biometer, as I told you, is closely applied to the surfaces of brain and spinal cord and cannot be removed easily. Now between these meninges there are spaces. Now, the space between biometer and arachnidometer is known as sub arachnide space. Then there is a potential space between dura metal and the Metal. This is known as subdural space. The subarachnoid space, which is between biometer and arachnoid metal, is filled with cerebral spinal fluid (CSF). To circulate through the subarachnoid space. Then the space which is between the arachnoid metal and dura metal, which is potential space, there is a thin film of fluid which lubricates the opposed surfaces of the arachnoid metal and dura metal. This space, whenever there is accumulation, of some fluid like blood, etc., then it accumulates here, then it becomes more prominent. Otherwise, it is a potential space between arachnide metal and dura metal, which is known as subdural space. So, between the arachnide metal and dura metal, there is a thin film of fluid. Which lubricates the opposed surfaces of the arachnoid metal and the dura metal to prevent friction. Now, this space is potential space. Suppose between arms of two hands there is a space, and if you apply some cream or oil, there is only thin film in between these. But whenever there is accumulation of blood or some other inflammatory fluid, this space is filled and become more visible. So normally there is space here which is potential lined by these membranes are lined by a thin film of fluid which prevent lubrication between these two spaces. The, there are some parts of the subarachnoid space which are more wider. For example, you can see here this is the parameter. Can you see? 
the subarachnoid nice space is comparatively more uh, dilated. Such spaces are known as cisterns. Now you can see here this cistern this space is known as the interpedicular cistern. Inter pedicular cistern. Here is the angle between basal surface of the cerebrum and anterior surface of the mid. The subarachnoid space is wider and is known as the interpedicular cistern. Similarly, here you can see between pyometer and arachnoid meter and the angle between cerebellum and posterior surface of the medulla obligata. Here, the subarachnoid space is again comparatively wider and it is known as the cerebellomedullary system. Cerebellomedullary system. The brain and spinal cord is not completely solid. Inside the brain and spinal cord there are cavities. And canals. The cavities are known as the ventricles. Which are intercommunicated with one another by canals. So here this is cerebrum. So inside the cerebrum again there is an irregular cavity. For example, this irregular cavity is in the cerebellar hemisphere, known as the lateral ventricle. Cavity of the several recipient is known as lateral ventricle. So, because there are two several hemispheres, therefore, there are two lateral ventricles when one right, right lateral ventricle and the other is left lateral ventricle. So, lateral ventricle is the ventricle of then inside the telencephalon lobe is the diencephalon. Now on each side of the diencephalon, between the two diencephalon, again there is a which is known as the third one. This is th third ventricle. It is the ventricle of dance cephalon. So between the two diencephalon, there is one ventricle known as the third ventricle. The lateral ventricle, each lateral ventricle joined with the third ventricle by interventricular foramen. This small foramen. Is called interventricular foramen. 
through which lateral ventricle communicate with the third ventricle, which is between right and left diaphragm. Next is the midbrain. The cavity of the midbrain is then reduced into a canal, which is known as the cerebral aqueduct. This canal, which traverses the midbrain, is known as cerebral aqueduct. Cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius. Then here you can see the palms, upper part of the medulla regata and cerebellum. Again, there is a ventricle, which is known as the fourth ventricle. This is fourth ventricle. Thus, you can see the right and left lateral ventricles communicate with the third ventricle through interventricular foramen. Then, the third ventricle communicate with the fourth ventricle by a canal which traverses the midbrain. This canal is known as the cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of Sylvius it communicates third with the fourth ventricle. Then the fourth ventricle again communicate with the canal which traverses the lower part of the medulla brigata, spinal cord. This is upper part of the medulla brigata, which is not traversed by any canal, but the lower part of the medulla brigata and the spinal cord is traversed by canal known as the central canal. Central canal. So the cerebrospinal fluid is formed in the ventricles and it circulates through the ventricles and canals. The CSF in the right left lateral ventricle flows into the third ventricle via interventricular foramen. And from the third ventricle it flows into the fourth ventricle cerebellum, pons, and upper medulla regata by cerebral aqueduct, the canal which traverses through the midbrain. Then the fourth ventricle then communicates with the central canal which passes through the lower part of the medulla regata and spinal cord. This is known as the central canal of the medulla regata and the spinal cord. Now outside is the subarachnoid space which is also filled with cerebrospinal fluid. So here in the roof of fourth ventricle there are three openings through which the cerebrospinal fluid flows into the subarachnoid space. In the roof of fourth ventricle there are three openings. One is in the middle line and two on the lateral side. Midline foramen is called foramen of Majendi, and on each side foramen of Lushka, that we discuss later 
detail. So why a foramen of Mejendi and foramen of Andrushka, which are foramina in the roof of the fourth ventricle, the fourth ventricle communicate with subarachnoid In this way, the CSF, which is formed by chloride flexes in the lateral ventricle, in the third ventricle, in the fourth ventricle, it circulates through the ventricles, lateral ventricle, third ventricle, via aqueduct, it flows into the fourth ventricle, and from the fourth ventricle into the central canal of medulla vagata, the spinal cord. And then, via three openings in the roof of the fourth ventricle, it flows out into the subarachnoid space, which circulate outside the brain, between pyre matter inside and the arachnoid matter outside. Now, these uh, <coughs> ventricles and canals, they are lined by epithelium. As we know, each surface of the body, whether it is external surface or internal surface, they are covered by epithelium. For example, our, our outer surface is covered by epidermis of the skin. What is epidermis? It is epithelium, stratified, squamous, keratinic type of epithelium. Similarly, the luminal surfaces of various tubular organs, for example, elementary canal, prosperity tract, genital unit tract, they are also lined by epithelium, known as the mucosa. Similarly, here you can see the uh, uh, ventricles, canals, this is the inner surface of the brain, which is also covered by epithelium. So the epithelial lining of the ventricles and canals is known as ependyma. Pandema is the epithelium which lines the ventricles and canals. It is simple tubidal epithelium. Pandema is simple tubidal epithelium. So these were three meninges the subarachnoid space, the subdural space, then the cavities and canals in the brain and spinal cord. It is two lateral ventricles, one third ventricle between the right and left diencephalon, then cerebral aqueduct of midbrain, fourth ventricle, which, is, which lies between the cerebellum behind, holes and medulla vagata in front, and then the central canal of lower part of the medulla vagata and spinal cord. And they all are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. And through three openings in the roof of the fourth ventricle, the ventricles and the canal communicate with the subarachnoid space and through this space also the cerebrospinal fluid flows. In another way, both outside and inside the brain there is fluid. Just like in case of embryo, outside is the amniotic fluid through which the brain floats inside. And all these ventricles and canals they are lined by a pandemic, which is the simple tubal lining of these ventricles and canals. Now this was about the meninges. Now the surfaces of brain they are not smooth. There are elevations known as the gyri. They are separated by furrows known as the sulci. One is known as gyrus and sulcus, plural gyri and sulci. Some pronouns, pronounce it gyri and sulci. So both correct. Gyri or gyri, sulci or sulci, both are correct. So if we apply, cut a section of the brain, so what are the chiri and sulci? Section through the cerebrum.
Now, it is a gray matter outside. And then there is white matter. This is white matter. This is white matter and this is gray matter. The substance of the brain is called gray matter M A T -E -E R and white matter M A T -E -E R. When meninges, dura matter M A T E R, recognized matter M A T E R. So this is the difference. Spelling. So, can you see this is the surface of the suppose cerebrum? It is not uh, even. There are elevations based in So, this is a gyrus. This is another gyrus. So, separated by furrows, sulci. This is a sulci. This is another sulci. So, you can see these sulci separate these gyra if I need it. So, the surfaces of cerebrum and also cerebrum, they are not smooth. There are elevations known as the gyra. And there are furrows uh, which separate these gyri are known as sulci. These uh, develop, the gyri and sulci develop after third fetal month. Gyri and sulci, they develop after third fetal month. Before third, mo third month, the surfaces of Brain are smooth. Then, after third month, then these gyra and sulci they appear. The purpose of these gyra and sulci is to increase surface area. In other words, to increase gray matter. Because gray matter comprises of nerve cells, neurons, so are to increase the number of neurons. So we need more gray matter, more ne ne more uh, neurons. Therefore, one method is that the size of the brain should be large. For that, we need a very large skull, which cannot be supported by body. So to accommodate the brain small size skull, but on the other hand, we need more gray matter, more neurons, therefore it is thrown into folds to accommodate the brain inside the skull without increasing the size of cranicality or without, without the size of increasing the skull. So it is said, the more there is gray matter, the more the person is intelligent. So these were guidelines and sulci, surface features of the cerebrum. Now oh, I will just uh, brief about the summary of functions of forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain.
Now, what are the functions of forebrain? Just briefly. Number one, it is possible for voluntary function. You know, the functions may be voluntary under your control, not under your control. So, the forebrain is meant for voluntary function. Number two, the function is thinking. It is your forebrain which think. Then speech is another function performed by the forebrain. Language. And then there are uh, some reflexes, some uh, okay, so spatial senses. You know, there are five spatial senses. Vision, olfaction, or smell, taste, hearing, and vestibular function. Vestibular functions like posture, balance, equilibrium. These are the five uh, spatial senses. These are some functions of, of the forebrain. Next uh, functions are the midbrain and hindbrain. Just summary of the functions of Midbrain and high brain, they are responsible for involuntary functions. The forebrain was responsible for voluntary functions, functions which are performed by your will. And the midbrain and high brain is responsible for involuntary functions. And some reflexes. Not all, because other reflexes are carried out at the level of spinal cord. But still, the midbrain and hindbrain is responsible for some of the reflexes. For example, if you throw a light in the eye, the pupil will constrict automatically. This is a reflex and carried out by the hindbrain and forebrain. Thank you very much.